Now that we've discussed magnetic field strength, it's time to talk about how a magnetic field exerts a force on a charge. First, let's review how an electric field works. Let's say we have a uniform electric field that looks like this. Let's also say we have a positive test charge plus Q inside this electric field. By the laws of electric fields, we know that this positive test charge will travel in the direction of the electric field lines. A negative test charge would travel in the opposite direction, just by definition. The equation for the force exerted by an electric field is equal to, it's a vector, equal to the amount of charge on our test charge times the electric field strength. Electric field strength is a measure of the newtons, the force, exerted per coulomb of charge. It's important to note that although the electric field may extend throughout all of space, it doesn't necessarily act on every object in that space. For instance, if you had some sort of neutral object here, no charge, neutral, then it wouldn't experience any electric field because this Q term would be zero. The forces exerted by a magnetic field are similarly conditional. A magnetic field only exerts a force on charged particles. However, a magnetic field is even pickier than an electric field because magnetic fields only exert forces on moving charges. So the velocity is important. Since velocity is a vector and the magnetic field strength is a vector, magnetic field forces are also concerned with the direction of the velocity with respect to the direction of the magnetic field. The equation for this relationship is that the force exerted by the magnetic field is equal to the magnitude of the charge times the velocity of the charge times b times sine of theta. We'll talk about what the sine theta means in the next slide. Here's a nice uniform magnetic field. Let's say it has strength b. You can see it's going to the right. And let's also say we have a small charged particle, q, let's say plus q to be exact. It's got a velocity moving in this direction. We can see that the magnetic field and the velocity of the particle are not in the same direction. We can specify an angle between the two right here. This angle we'll call theta. The magnetic field is only concerned with the component of the velocity vector in the direction perpendicular to the magnetic field. So that would be the component right here. We can calculate the value of this component by taking v times sine of theta. This is why v sine of theta is part of our equation for the force exerted by a magnetic field. It's also important to note that a particle moving with a velocity exactly perpendicular to the magnetic field will experience the most force because all of its velocity will be in the direction perpendicular to the magnetic field, not just a component of it. So this means that a particle that is moving exactly parallel to a magnetic field will feel no force because no component of its velocity will be perpendicular to the magnetic field. We know that the force exerted by a magnetic field is a vector, so it must have a direction. We have to calculate this direction using another version of the right-hand rule, like the one we discussed before. This version, you have to think about the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of V sine theta, the component of the velocity perpendicular to the magnetic field. First, you'll want to point your middle finger in the direction of the magnetic field. Then you'll point your second finger in the direction of the velocity, or the current, as it says here. Remember, current is just moving charge, so this is the same as velocity. Remember, this is in the direction of positive charge, and then your thumb will be pointing in the direction of the force. In this case, your thumb points in the direction into the board or into the page, so you'll have a vector like this. In the next lecture, we'll talk about currents and the forces on a current-carrying wire.